What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 1st of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks ETFs that performed well or poorly today, and some that I see potential in for this upcoming week. But before we do get into this, guys, if you find value in these videos yes you i'm talking to you on the other side of this computer if you find value feel free to smash that like button guys it really really does help support the channel and help the channel grow and i forever appreciate all you guys out there for rocking with me subscribing liking the video so smash that like button guys and let's get right into the topic of today's video so we have about 13 minutes left today you know in the market and needless to say, guys, in terms of the indices right here, the SPX, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, it was a pretty boring day in the stock market. We can see literally, guys, the SPX is not even up any amount of uh, percentage points right, right now. It's literally up one penny. Now it's down about 15 cents. So not much movement in terms of the SPX today, guys, at all. Honestly, the Dow Jones is up around $31 right now with about 12 minutes left in the market, up around 0.13%, barely any movement at all. But the NASDAQ honestly has the most movement out of the three major indices. It's down about 0.5% down about $37.25 as of right now. So what is this telling me, guys, you know, in terms of the overall markets right now? Pretty much what these technicals are telling me is that we're gearing up for a little pullback in the overall markets, right? We've seen a lot of the major stocks over this past week do very, very well. We've seen Tesla come back up. We've seen Facebook do absolutely phenomenal. Apple did very well. You know, a lot of the big name stocks out there did pretty well this week, right? And, you know, all these earnings, you know, pump some optimism into the market honestly guys and we saw a lot of the indices fly up a good chunk this week just to give you guys you know a little bit of context here we started off this week what what date was this we can see we started off this week the 25th let's say the low point was at around 26 24 in terms of the spx right we can see the high point of this week was it at, was at around 27 16 so overall guys this this week, we had about a 3.5% gain in the S&P 500, which is absolutely fantastic for just a week span. Remember, guys, you know, the S&P 500 historically brings around 8, 10%, something like that. So the fact that we did 3.5% in one week, right? You know, that's pretty big considering we do 8 to 10 percent on a yearly basis um, historically in terms of the SPX. But, you know, if we're judging on these technicals right here, guys, we already know we broke out of that resistance. I've been talking about this in the past couple of videos, the resistance of the 180 SMA, which has been a resistance over the past couple of months since we did start selling off in the beginning of October. We had three separate occasions that we struggled to get and we failed to get above that 180 SMA in October in November and of course in December right before that drastic decline that we had all the way to the bottom here which occurred right around Christmas time in 2018 and since then guys of course we know that we've had about a month a little bit over a month at this point of straight recovery in the SPX and the overall markets the SPX in particular guys is up around 14 13 14 percent from this bottoming out point right now giving us you know a great start to the year of 2019 in the stock market if you're a long-term investor if you have a long-term portfolio there's a really 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 good chance that you are green overall in the year of 2019 but like i said earlier on in this video guys you know we are gearing up for a slight pullback here guys we have you know a slight negative day today it looks like we pushed to that higher high at around 27.16 and now we're slowly starting to to pull back so in terms of next week guys you know i'm going to be waiting to see a if we are going to pull back and of course we can judge this by the futures what large caps are looking like 
pre-market hours, right? If they're red, if the futures are red, obviously we're starting to pull back. And I'm going to keep a close eye on, of attention here on this 50 SMA on this 20-day one-hour chart, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks, really since that bottoming out point, uh, you know, back in December, the start you know, of 2019 roughly, right? So let's say we do end up pulling back here and we get to this level at around 26.75. Keep an eye and see if we're going to hold that old resistance at around 26.75 as a new support right on top of this 50 SMA. But let's say we break it, right? Which there is a chance anything is possible, right? That is going to be the first step, the first, um, you know, really the first, point of confirmation that we're slowly starting to decline and start the downtrend in price honestly guys if I'm being quite frank with you here this is the you know the support that we're going to have to keep an eye on for that but let's say we pull back we end up holding the 50 SMA and we start to push back up you know that's going to be a good sign that we saw a slight pullback and we're continuing the uptrend guys so that's pretty much it you know we are flat right now I am expecting a little pull back due to the RSI being a bit overbought right now. We had a lot of great earnings reports that popped up a lot of stocks this week, right? And I do expect some short-term money, some short profit taking um, to be taken, uh, you know, this upcoming week, potentially causing that pullback. So in terms of the Dow guys, it's very similar, right? We're overbought here on the RSI. We broke out of that 180 SMA resistance. That's been a resistance over the past couple of months. We've been talking about this in every single video and we are still holding that uptrend on the 20 day, one hour chart here. If I can get, you know, get rid of all this jazz here, you guys can see it a little bit excuse me, a little bit better. And this is not the 20 day chart. This is the 20 day chart. So take a look at this guys, you know, that uptrend is still intact. We pushed to that higher high at around 25,193 that we can see here. And now we're gearing ourselves for a pullback. So keep an eye, guys, on this trend line, on this 50 SMA, on the Dow Jones. Are we going to break below it? Possibly continuing that downtrend, possibly getting back into that downtrend that we were in a couple of weeks ago? Or are we going to hold this as a new support? Are we going to start curling back up here, which could give a good dip buy on some of the Dow 30 companies, you know, some that I already see potential in, including J&J. That's just a quick little, um, you know, tip there. J&J is, you know, looking pretty good right now in terms of the stock, the technicals. If it does end up pulling back, you know, that could be a good entry point in terms of J&J, &J, but we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes here. But, you know, the Dow guys, just keep an eye on this. And of course, if we break it, just like the SPX, that's going to be a continuation or the start rather of a downtrend that we haven't seen, you know, in the month of January and in the year of 2019 at all, right? So the NASDAQ on the 20 day, one hour chart, we broke that resistance at around 68.20 that we've been talking about over the past couple of videos. And for those of you guys that don't know or haven't been watching the videos or if you're just a new subscriber here, you know, the NASDAQ has been trading in this horizontal channel really from the 18th of January all the way up to around the 30th. So 11 days in a row, guys, the NASDAQ was playing in this channel. We can clearly see the support being at around 66.20 and the resistance being at around 68.20. So there was a $200 window that, you know, the NASDAQ was bouncing up, you know, holding in between, right? And the fact that we broke out of this, I'm pretty sure this was, um, you know, obviously due to a lot of the big name stocks doing pretty well this week, it pushed the entire market up. We broke broke out of that resistance and now we're trending below this other resistance from a couple of weeks back. Let me actually show you that one here. So if we can zoom in a bit, we can see this resistance stems back from 1116 November 16th back in 2018. We were selling off, we held this point a bit and then we broke below it. So that's making it a resistance point right here guys. And we can see clearly guys, you know, it's been a resistance from where the uh, the fact that we got rejected by it again back here in the middle of December and now of course we're testing it right now so if we do end up breaking out of here guys which again there is a chance if we break out of this 
We're going to be trading in this other horizontal channel between 6820-ish, 68.50, up to around 7100. So if we do end up breaking here, guys, there is a chance we run all the way back up to around $7,100 in terms of the NASDAQ futures. So, guys... What did I trade today? We got the market analysis out of the way. The gist of it is that I'm waiting for a pullback, some short-term money, possibly coming off the table next week in terms of profit-taking and some of these large-cap stocks. Now, let's talk about what I personally traded today on the 1st of February. And if you guys read the title... Cron was in the title, and that's exactly what I personally traded today for a 1.5% profit. And for those of you guys that don't know, Cron is a marijuana stock. This is a stock, a company I should say, that just got invested into by, um, what's the ticker, M.O. Altria, right? Altria, the big tobacco company, they invested around, what was it, like $1.8 billion, taking a 45% ownership in this marijuana company. And literally, guys, ever since this happened, Cron has been on fire. It's been ridiculous, guys. I read that in the year of uh, this year that we're in right now, in 2019, the stock is literally up nearly 80% five ninety percent at this point actually did it double guys we can see honestly yeah i'm mistaken it doubled it went from 1070 all the way up to 2179 i'm pretty sure if my math's right yeah that's that's a double guys the stock has doubled literally in the past 30 days so the stock has positively reacted to this acquisition uh the 45 percent stake into the company, and honestly, guys, I've been talking about Cron over the past couple of weeks. I made a video, you know, right around here as it was curling back up and calling this one out, and ever since then, guys, you know, of course, the deal with Altria pushed it up. I'm not some kind of magician, some god that just knows when things are going to happen, when things are going to happen, but it kind of worked in my favor a bit here, right? We started to see the cup and handle, right, or not really the cup and handle, the cup pattern starting to form, and then once we broke that 14 level, guys, it's like we broke out, right? Right? Because from there, from this point, that was a resistance from the past, right? We can see multiple different occasions where it broke. And from there, it's been constant push. Literally from that resistance break, we've saw another eight, seven, eight dollars uh run in terms of the shares prices. So overall, guys, you know, Cron right now, it's looking absolutely insane. And where did I trade it, guys? Well, I traded traded it this morning. As we were popping above this 50 SMA, I did not get in this original pump up from 19 or $20, rather, all the way up to 2150. I ended up getting in on this second pullback, this pretty big pullback, honestly. And I called this one out in the chat as it was pulling back. We saw a nice profit uh, margin open from 2150 down to around 2090, a 3.16 to be exact. And from there, guys, all I was waiting to see, guys, literally. All I was waiting for is the hold above this 50 SMA, which was a resist or a support rather to start off the day. And there goes the markets, ding, ding, ding. And we saw, you know, this was a support to begin the day at around 2018. We held above it, and honestly, all throughout pre-market hours, we held above it, and we bounced very nicely. We pulled back, and we held above it again. Literally, some candlesticks were right here consolidating. This was for about like. Eight minutes of consolidation, then we started to see a pump back up. And that's when I ended up getting in, guys. I believe I got filled at around $21.67, roughly. And from there, I did not add more money to my position because this was really a quick scalp trade. It literally took about a couple of minutes to get out of this one. But from there, you know, I wrote it up for 1.5% profit, ended up selling off at around $21.35 to 36 37 cents right around there and the trade literally lasted me about like 20 maybe 15 10 15 20 minutes so not really long of a trade at all here honestly it was more of like 10 minutes to be completely honest because we can see 
you know, from 2107, when I got in, ended up selling off right around here. That was literally, you can see the clock here on Thinkorswim. That was about a 10, 15 uh, minute move. In terms of Kron, ended up taking my profits there and calling it a day. Because for those of you guys that didn't watch yesterday's video, I advise you to go check that video out. I didn't trade yesterday because I didn't see any opportunities open up to me. And I do get a lot of questions about, should you trade every single day? If you guys want to know that, if you're a new subscriber that has, that has not seen my answer yet, go check out that video. But, you know, I didn't trade yesterday, so I was being very cautious and patient today to see a setup that I liked. We got it here, 1.5% profit. Very, very solid day in terms of Kron. So, guys... In terms of Kron right now, there's really no telling when it's going to pull back. We can see here, you know, it's completely oversold, but it has been oversold over the past couple of weeks, and the stock market traders, investors, really haven't given a crap, right? Because they got a big investment from Altria. This is honestly huge news for the cannabis company Kron, and that's just shot the stock up 100%, literally 100% in the year of 2019. So when are we going to get a pullback, guys? You know, probably soon, probably soon, because we're going to see some profit taking at some point, guys. You know, you got to understand, there's investors out there, there's some short-term traders out there that are up heavily right now on Kron. They're up heavily on either call options or, you know, on actual shares. And they're going to, at some point take their profits off the table. And if enough people do this, right, if a lot of people start doing this, especially if we get even more overbought, let's say it pushes to the $22, $23 level, you know, people start taking their profits. What's that going to happen? Well, the stock is going to sell off pretty aggressively, you know, similar to what we've seen here, guys. On a smaller scale, you know, Kron shot from $5 all the way up to $12, and then it pulled back all the way back to $7. And this is something that's happening right now, right? We see you know, it pulled back to $10, just like it did here. It started off the run at $5, right? We doubled in price, or literally, we doubled in price, right? Now we can expect maybe a pullback back to like $13, right? That's not too out of the, you know, out of the loop in my personal opinion, because in the back, you know, the back couple of months we see here, you know, we pushed up, doubled our position, right? And then we pulled back on top of that previous resistance. So if we pulled back all the way to this previous resistance at $13 again, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised and that's a huge move i know that's a pretty bold statement but again we've seen these stocks do it in the past and honestly guys you know marijuana stocks they're extremely extremely volatile and i just would not be surprised if that ended up happening so let me take a look at some tickers i want to talk about very quickly at the end of this video and then i'll send you guys off on your way and also comment down below let me know what you guys ended up trading today this week how did this week treat you in the stock market, drop a comment down below. Let me know. Did you buy any long-term positions? Did you, you know, trade any stocks? Let me know down below. I would love to know. So a couple of stocks I want to talk about today. One being Sony. We saw Sony reported their earnings. I didn't dive too deep into what they ended up reporting in terms of their earnings, but we saw their stock actually took a huge pullback today a very very big pullback it's down about eight percent right now and this opens up a potential play this upcoming week in my personal opinion right because we always see not always but sometimes we see stocks that get pummeled one day Sometimes they have a bounce back day the next day, right? And this could potentially happen in terms of Sony, guys, right? We saw literally it was at $52 and we backed down all the way to $45. That obviously opened up around, what, like a 12% margin. So on Friday, guys, especially, or not Friday, on Monday, if this consolidation continues and if we slowly start to push up, maybe into the $46, $47 range, this could be a potential play, maybe back to $50 maybe $48, who knows, but the whole idea here is to potentially catch a bounce back up play in terms of Sony, so let me quickly set an alert here, I want to be notified, let's say is at or above, we could put one at $47, so Sony guys, 
that's one that I'm watching heavily. Um, we saw Micron has been doing pretty well over the past couple of days as well. Today, up around 3.61%. And for those of you guys that don't know, Micron is one of my holdings in my long-term portfolio. And the fact that we're breaking out of this downtrend makes me very happy because I was down around 30% on this long-term uh, investment in Micron. And, you know, now that we're starting to gain some ground, I'm liking this in terms of my long-term portfolio. But talking about it on more of a short-term trading basis, it's looking very good right now, right? We broke out of that 180 SMA. We're pushing up higher highs, higher lows, all that uptrend stuff that we like to see. But what I want to see now is a potential pullback to bring that RSI down a little bit to get a better entry point in my swing trading portfolio. Maybe we pull back down to around $38, which would put us right at that 50 SMA. I think that would be a pretty safe bet for an entry point and a potential swing trade in Micron ticker symbol MU. We already talked about Cron. Let's talk about Tesla, guys, because Tesla has been doing pretty well ever since it dropped down a couple of days ago. So we see Tesla dropped all the way down here. This is when they reported that 7% job cut. We hit around 280 and now we're trending all the way back up to $315, guys. So what am I waiting for in terms of Tesla? If we can see here on the short-term chart, it's nothing but nice uptrend higher highs, higher lows over the past couple of days. So what would be nice here, guys, is to see a potential pullback, maybe back to 305, 308-ish for a nice swing trade because we've seen Tesla do this a lot in the past. They sell off heavily, end up finding support, end up pushing back up, right? Literally, this pattern that we see right here has been done in the past. We can see here, you know, we got that pattern again here as well here as well, here as well. You know, there's a bunch of different scenarios where Tesla has pulled back, found support, curled back up, and then ended up filling that entire gap. So that's what I'm waiting for in terms of Tesla, and I do see a lot of potential in Tesla for next week. So to end off this video, guys, let's talk about one more, and that's going to be based on the gold futures. We see here the gold futures I've pushed up. JNUG has been doing very well, but I actually want to talk about JDST, which is the bear ETF for the gold futures, meaning whenever the gold futures are going down in price, JDST is going up in price. So we can see here, guys, you know, we pushed up the 1330 and now we're slowly starting to sell off. So if we do end up selling off, guys, you know, maybe back to 1310, 1315, bringing that RSI down a bit. This could open up a nice margin on JDST. And of course, guys, if we do end up, you know, getting that pullback, we can play JDST on the upside, right? And then once we find support on the gold futures, if we find support to continue the uptrend, right, we can hop into JNUG, which at that point would be a pretty good entry point. So, that's pretty much it, guys, for these couple tickers that I'm watching. I'm going to be covering more tickers on Sunday's video. So keep an eye. If you're new, subscribe to the channel for Sunday's video. I talk about different stocks, ETFs that I'm looking to buy, invest, trade in every single Sunday for that upcoming week. And we'll get into more depth on more stocks and ETFs then. So if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to smash that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter. Join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for all the support, all the love. Peace out.